Duncan? Moroccan Styles? Yes, sir. You know what time it is? Uh, well, there was a lot of traffic coming up from La Jolla. Uh-huh. All right, let's move it. Cast off. <laughs> Nobody expects to catch with that. Sea bass, albacore, they come pretty big. What's the big tank for? I'm Liz Penfold. Murdoch and Styles. Todd and Buzz. Todd, Buzz, Liz, Doc. Here's the beginning of four beautiful friendships. Amen, 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 amen. The duck's a little salty, isn't he? We have to go out six miles to our marker. We laid a line last night. Is that for fish or fishermen? Haven't had to use it yet. It's a big tank. Want to keep him alive. Alive? We're catching him from marine land, right? Wrong. We only rent the boat from marine land. And a lab and a small tank to put our animals in. Animals? What animals? The ones we catch. And, Liz, dear, what animals we catch? Sharks. Duncan, the ad didn't say anything about catching sharks. Fifty dollars a week, room and board, that's it. Nothing about sharks. Well, of course not. You wouldn't answer the ad if it had. You just do as you're told. You'll emerge as I have with a regulation number of fingers and toes. Well, I don't know, Doctor. I may want to play the piano someday or spank a baby. Mutiny? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Get the shrimp. How can the two of you just sit there? We're protesting false ads. If we lose these sharks, I'll shoot you both and feed you to the fishes. What's the big deal? Ocean's full of sharks. Please, I'm begging you. We can't afford to lose them. Well, always liked a girl with spirit. Who can also be sweet. Uh, Murdoch, put your hand right where I've got a hold of him. Hold him tight against the side of the boat. You got him? Yeah. In a syringe. What's in the syringe? And the setting. That'll get him to sleep. Now let's get him on board. Who's dead?
tag for? That's yellow for Tuesday. You got it? All right, boys. Pick them up and get them in the large tank at the back. That's it. What next, Doc? Well, there are two more on the hooks. Dinner? If you do as you're told, and I mean everything you're told, and if you don't quit. Well, that's blackmail. It sure is. <laughs> That's fine, a good day's work. All right, let's bait up and we'll head for home. Buzz the bait cans up front there. Todd, you put a line on the buoy, will you, and hurry it up? I want to get these sharks back to the big tank. Tell me something, shark lady. Hmm? How'd you get into this racket? Studied oceanography in La Jolla. Graduated, heard about Doc and his good work. And, and... fell in love with him. Don't be silly, he's a married man. Uh, Marv? Yeah, listen, we're coming in now. I'll have the truck down at the pier, will you? Good. Yeah, not a bad day. We got three blues. Pretty darn good, as a matter of fact. Yeah. All right, we'll see you. Have another one of those? Yeah. Thank you. Well, we've caught him, Doctor. What's it all about? You know what coronary thrombosis is? My father died of it. No. You know what causes a thrombosis? Yeah, a blood clot. That's right, a clot in the artery. Now, where does the clot come from? A bump in the artery. Now, what causes the bump? Fatty deposits like cholesterol under the lining of the artery. Now, there are a lot of things about cholesterol that we don't know yet. Where does it come from? Where does it go? Why? Can it be stopped once it's deposited? Can it be removed? You following me? So far, but why sharks? What we do is catch the sharks and inject them with tag molecule. So, uh, this is research? Mm-hmm. I always thought it was with books and test tubes, not guns and hooks. <laughs> you learn something new every day. <laughs> How long have you been at this? About a year. How's it going? Great! Shirts off if you want to. Get them into the tank. Now, right, come on, get them into the tank here. Walk them slowly, that'll revive them. Grab them behind the back of the head and the tail. Move the body like this. We gotta keep them alive for six days. Then what? Then we kill them and extract the liver.
promenade, oh, promenade. And an old promenade. There we go. Look, Ma, I'm a research scientist. Go to the left tonight, Chet. Please. It's been six days in those red tags. I have to see what's inside that shark, don't I? Right? Maybe afterwards we'll finish the bridge. Here. Here. I want you to meet somebody. This is Mr. Buzz Murdoch, and oh, that's Mr. Todd Stiles. Hi, Chet. Hi. Hi, Liz. Hi, Chester Fester. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, let's get inside and eat. I'm so hungry I could eat mud off a dirty spoon. How about sand? Oh, uh, Helen, this is Mr. Buzz Murdoch and uh, Todd Stiles. Here's Helen, my wife. Mrs. Duggan? Hi. You want dinner? There is no dinner. Oh, uh, weren't you feeling well, dear? Dandy. I cooked dinner. You can have it if you want to dig it out of the garbage. Well, we uh, did get a late start. Oh, that's perfectly all right. I'm not going to bother with dinners anymore. You can take your group into town. There's plenty of restaurants, if you have the price. You're embarrassed, Walter. I'm sorry. Embarrassment isn't as bad as some things. Come on, Chet. But I want to go with Daddy to the restaurant. I said get in here. Brandy, Doc? No, thank you, Todd. You know, uh, living on a beach like that can make you pretty lonesome. My wife didn't mean to be rude. That's a nice boy, your son. <laughs> well, I gotta get back to the lab. Well, drop me off, huh? All right. Helen can show you your room. No need to be frightened. She's really a wonderful gal. I'll see you out in the station wagon. Thank you. I know it'll sadden you, but I'm beaten. I'm going to be on my way. The doc says good night. I trust you'll find your way. There's nothing between us, wise guy. Even Helen knows that. But I bet you wish Helen was in Ceylon or someplace. Look, will you stop it? The doc happens to be a lot older than I am. I admire him. He's a remarkable man. I enjoy working with him. Must it be the way you think? Of course not. That's why you keep shooting those eyes. She shouldn't be married to him. Oh? Who should? The basic research man is a special kind of person. 
He wants to know the unknown. He wants to peer into tiny worlds. He's a pioneer, a hero. And the woman that marries him has to understand that. And be prepared to live on rice, if necessary. Doc's on a grant from the Gunther Foundation. Do you know what his salary is? $4,000 a year. You like rice? <laughs> oh, shit. Come on, let's dance, huh? No. 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 Well, then, tell me, what would you be doing if you never met the doc? I guess I'd be off someplace. India, Japan. Wherever people are hungry, trying to feed them. That's why I studied oceanography. The ocean's a prime source of protein, you know. I do? Well, now you do. Come on, shark lady, we dance. Uh, just what are you trying to do? Basic research. Explore the unknown. I've never held a scientist. Well, I ask you the question that drives most basic research men crazy. Uh, what do you plan to discover? Well, I don't know until I investigate. Coming in? Uh, no, I'm gonna get down to the lab and do some work. Thanks, Doc. Mrs. Duncan? Why didn't he come in, Buzz? Todd, Mrs. Duncan. Didn't want to look at me, Todd. Mrs. Duncan, which room is mine? <laughs> Gee, I'm sorry. It's the one upstairs on the left, facing the beach. Thanks. You see, I, I live in a child's world all day. And I'm an adult. I need adults. <laughs> I need my husband. Would you like a cup of tea? Yeah, thanks. Good. Come here. I'm using you. Yes, it's unfair, but I can't help it. I hate sand. See, on the floor, in the food, in the bed. I bet you don't believe that I was beautiful. Not just pretty, but beautiful. Yes, I believe. Do you know why I wear my hair like this? Because I can cut it myself. His beauty parlors cost money. Oh, he could have had anything he wanted in medicine, anything at all. He was cocky, sure of himself. He'd read the end of the book. So, I struggled with him. Who can't make sacrifices for a few years? There's only one problem. He got hooked on research. So what do you say to that? How fine. He discovered the humanity in himself. Nonsense, it's a betrayal. Those sharks eat better than we do, and they know him better than we do. You think that, uh, that I don't understand how uh, that his work is important, or, or uh, what our life would be like if he, if he made a great discovery? But what if he doesn't? How far can one wife and one six-year-old boy go without money or a relationship? My husband could go into practice tomorrow, make $30,000 a year, and be home most nights of the week. Would you like 
you like lemon or cream? Oh, just sugar, please. You know why I'm telling you all this? It helps to talk. I want you to go away. Somebody's got to see my side of it. Don't help him. Go away. Please, go away. Cold, huh? Freezing. How'd it go? We ended up at the lab. The doc is getting ready to shoot those sharks full of some kind of new isotope, whatever that is. Should see the setup, complete with Geiger counter. How can you make time in a lab? <laughs> well, I had a talk with Mrs. Duncan. Rather, she had a talk with me. She invited us to go fry other fish. Take off. Leave. So we find a motel. No. She meant far, far away. Stop helping doc. Why? She puts dinner on the table at six and no doc? Something like that. She's got a story. I don't care what her story is. I'm staying. I like it here. Give me a cigarette. What are you looking for? A cigarette. of nature is to break your heart trying to figure out what makes her work. Now, I understand your complaints. Just for the record, I have a few complaints too, spoken or unspoken. Whatever my research is worth to society, that's what holds me together. That justifies my having been born, my continuation to live from day to day because I have no other justification. I spin not, and neither do I toil. Just merely do research. When was the last time you spent five minutes alone with your son? How about a little research there? How about a couple of questions as to why, when, what, how your son is making out? I do the best I can. You're a trained doctor in a world full of sickness. I don't want to hear that anymore. Nothing stands between you and the practice of medicine except your own will not to. I will not give up doing something that has meaning to me to chase dollars. All right. All right, Dr. Duncan. All right, great man of science and dedication. All right. I won't quarrel with you as to what there is in my eyes for you to see. But surely you don't need a microscope to read the story of your son in his eyes every time he looks at you. Will you get off of my back? Both of you, just get off my back. You know that there are some people that shouldn't have children. I'm sorry I gave him to you. I'm sorry he was ever born. But we'll get off your back. We'll get out of your way real soon. All right, I'll take him out in the boat with me tomorrow. You ought to listen to me sometimes. He'll have fun in the boat with us. to this time of night. Come on, Chad, you can tell us where your friends. Where are you going? Please let me go. This is no way to run away from home. Let's go back and get some clothes and some money and some sandwiches. I heard what she said. She said we shouldn't have had any children. Chad. 
Yeah. All mothers and fathers argue sometimes. It doesn't mean anything. It's just a lot of noise. Chet, I know your mother loves you very much. I know it. I know it. Blue shark, Chet. How much does he weigh? Well, about 40 pounds. Get below and get that shirt off. What? Now I lost the shark. Chet. I'm sorry I lost the shark. I know, sir. I know. second, just a second, and he fell overboard. You got involved with work. Now there's a big surprise. Oh, well, it's just one of those things. Just one of those things? You take a boy out on a boat and you let him fall overboard and it was just one of those things? Give me the keys. Give me the car keys. Come on, Jack. Helen. Helen. I'm through. I have had it. You want to get involved with work? All right. You can get involved with work, but all by yourself. And you don't have to worry about your wife and son anymore because you won't have a wife and son. I'm going to call my father and have him send me two one-way tickets to Minnesota. So you won't have to worry about us interfering with your work. I'm sure he'll be glad to take care of us. Helen. Get in there. I don't want to hear it. Now listen, Helen, don't you... Scientists are kooks and weirdos. Well, they've done some good things like inventing television. 
But of course, I wouldn't want my daughter to marry one. I drink to your success tonight, Doc. She'll be better off with her father. He wants to furnish an office for me. He thinks the doctor is some sort of sportsman who chases dollars, tally-ho, $40,000 a year. Yeah, I'm letting her go on a basic research man. Oh, yeah, things I will do. We'll stagger the imagination. I think first I'll lick coronary thrombosis and I'll create a machine that'll control the flow of molecules that could lick cancer. Then I think I'll find a drug that will prevent aging. All sorts of wonderful things. You see, I'm a man who is important out of all proportion to his numbers. Isn't that right, my young and shining friends? Right. Right. I can hear your silence, Todd. Now look, if you take a kangaroo rat and you put him into a cage with an eagle, no matter what that ego does, he's not going to catch that rat. If you make one simple ablation, one simple removal by surgery, you take away that rat's eardrums. You destroy his hearing. He's dead. What about Chet, Doc? Can you make it without Chet? An ablation is an ablation. Let's go kill some sharks. Will it work, Doc? I don't know, Buzz. Have to distill it, and then we'll see. You think I'm some kind of cold, heartless monster, don't you? And you think I'm some sort of a hero? Well, you're both wrong. Just doing what I have to do. How much money do we have left in the bank? It's a nice impulse, Buzz, but forget it. Why should a man like him have to make a choice like this? It's wrong, Todd, it's wrong. Bus drivers make more. He gives us his life and his salary is a punishment. It's not our responsibility, it's his. What are you talking about? She shouldn't put him in a spot like this. He shouldn't put her in a spot like this. He wants to serve humanity? All right, she's humanity and the boy is humanity. I want to give him the money. Well, he won't take it. How much time does it buy? And in three months, the same situation jumps up again. The whole world was made in six days. I'd like to give you and your husband a thousand dollars so he can continue his work. That's very generous of you, Buzz. And beautiful. I thank you for it. Well, the doc is breaking his back to do something for people, and I don't think he should have to worry about money. I want to give him three months because I'm betting he's going to make it. Like in any good movie? Why don't you take the money? It'll give you time to think, maybe work it out. Work it out how? 
Well, I, I don't know the answer, but give it a chance. Sometimes things happen. Say it's a gamble. Take the money, please. I can't buzz. I've already called my father. The tickets are on the way. Just like that, you break it up? When a woman loves a man, she sticks by him through thick and thin. For better or for worse. She doesn't use his son as a club. Chet is no club. He is a fact, a real alive boy asleep upstairs who needs a mother and father. And if he can't have both, then at least he needs a mother. A calm, relaxed mother, not a hysterical wreck who, who snaps and shouts and... Do you know your husband got drunk tonight? And he was crying? Let's try a five-day shark. All right. What do we got to lose? Let's go. Still, will you? This is silly, it won't work. An ablation is an ablation is an ablation, Todd. Let her go, Doc. Let her go. She's my wife, Liz. That says nothing. I love her, Liz. And that says it all.
Where are you going? First stop, La Jolla. I don't know. Look, Liz, I've got an available shoulder. I'm a good listener, and I'm volunteering with no strings. Travel light and keep flexible, that's my motto. So please go away, I want to be alone. Jump to William. Where's <laughs> Chet? He's outside. Did, Mrs. Duncan? He grabbed a gun and he climbed up on the rim of the shark tank and he shot the sharks, hollering, tally ho, tally ho. <sighs> Don't look so sad, boys. For the first time, we may have a life together. Not together. Side by side. Not together. You'll go to Minnesota and Doc will open up an office or go into applied research. A pharmaceutical think factory may be where the money is, but you'll be living with a fish out of water. Fish came out of water and became land animals. That took generations, Mrs. Duncan. I'm not sure the doctor can do it in one lifetime. Look, fellas, it's a tough world. And maybe Doc doesn't have any right to be as, as free as he wants to be. Mrs. Duncan, we have a couple of thousand dollars. No, I don't want your money. Now leave me alone. The job is finished. You're not needed anymore. You're fired. Listen, you think you've got a gripe because you have a husband that's not around all the time? Because he wraps himself up in his work and he doesn't pay much attention to you and because he doesn't make much money, right? Okay, that's what he owes you. What do you owe him? How do you think you'd feel if you had to use all your mind and your heart and your concentration to solve a problem and your wife was tearing you apart? Don't you think he has any right to do the kind of work he wants to? I just want to leave you with one thing. You can probably tear him apart from his work, sure. And you can probably turn him into a doctor, sure. But do you have the right to do that? He's a man. Do you have the right to force him to be something less than a man? Because all you understand is that he owes you companionship. What about the companionship and support you owe him? Doesn't the marriage ceremony say, love? honor and cherish anymore. You know, Chet, there's a law in science says that matter can neither be created nor destroyed. So nothing is ever lost. At least we found out what not to do in the project. Anybody picks up on it, then he'll know what doesn't work. Pony. Pony.
feeling should we ever pass through Minnesota, we'll find a slick, fancy pants doctor who'll give us a shot in the hip for 10 bucks. Yeah, well, I have a feeling if we should ever pass this way again, we'll find a sandy-haired character in an old gray sweatshirt fishing for sharks. Talker. The fixer. <laughs> Come on, fixer, let's make some miles. Film presentation, Herbert B. Leonard, executive producer.